Tonight on Hip on the Spot News. The Apache is still in the workshop and George still in the academy. The Hind hires some gunners and expects new features. We visit the South Pacific map eastern side in another simulator. And we rest assured that a Eurofighter is in good hands. This and more on How I Play. Hello Virtual Pilots, I am Andre Celesti and tonight we are going to talk about the latest news in DCS world. The long delayed AH-64D gets yet again prime time coverage, still focused on the Apache systems like the targeting acquisition designation site or TATS, the primary sensor of this magnificent module. Matt Wagner, senior producer at Eagle Dynamics, shows off the very basic functions of the TADS and the more advanced ones in a two-part video coverage of the long-awaited Apache, featuring a showcase that includes ways of viewing TADS video from the video page and using the night vision sensor. But wait, there is more! On Valentine's Day, uh, sorry, Valentine's Day, we dive into the AWS that stands for Area Weapon Systems, containing the M230E1 30mm chain gun that definitely packs a punch. With its multiple ammunition types that include the M789 High Explosive Dual Purpose Rounds and the M788 Practice Round, that shoots those blue painted projectiles with white markings that only penetrate the target and provide no extra function. Hmm, indeed. But they still kill, no? Yes, they do. Nice. So with all the delays and many talks about the Apache, let's get a brief look at what is actually ready for the early access release. As we access the information from ED, we get to see that the flight model is ready alongside the external model with textures, the US Army skins and for the moment a basic damage modeling. The wipers are ready to be used, parking brake as well, the tail wheel, backup gauges, searchlight, arm and safe conditions, the master caution and master warning and the CMWS. Inside the cockpits we already saw that the 3D mesh and textures alongside all the animations are ready to be admired. The battery power is working and also we got to see the external view pilot and models, they are ready. For lightning, both external and internal lights are operational, so we don't get a viper situation with no implementation of external lights at launch. Whew, thank you guys. The TAS is ready with a TV flare and functions, the iHads with all symbology modes, lightning control and of course flare control. The NVS and NVG are operational as well, so prepare for night operations from the get-go. Both external and internal sounds are implemented already. The EUFD, MPD pages and the AWS rockets, laser hellfire and George as pilot. So all of this are reported as ready for the early access release. But as you may know, there are things that block that release. So let's take a look at what is still needed before ED can push the ready button and launch this baby. And first on the list is the Stabilator Flight Dynamics, together with Hold Modes, Heading, Attitude and Altitude. The engines start with APU, engine starters alongside engine and rotor parameters. So yeah, that's why we didn't get yet a proper startup of the Apache. Makes sense. Then George needs to learn the engine operations. Come on George, can you pick up the pace now? Plus the cooperative multiplayer syncing, the initial damage model with flight and system effects, George as co-pilot and gunner, the UK and Dutch skins, bedankt the storage jettison panel and improved pilot animations, UI assets together with the wallpaper, the module icon and the loading screen. So when all of the above are ready, we can expect the release of the Apache. Until then, we will have to wait a little more time. We interrupt this program with breaking news from the Apache Frontline. It seems that the AH-64D has entered close beta testing with one of the critical aspects being network play, requiring many testers to gather enough data. So it seems that the first large-scale network test has been completed with excellent results and ED mentions that we are still on track for an early access release before the end of March 2022. Great news! Now back to our normal program. 
Meanwhile, ED lets us know that the 3D model of the Lockheed Martin Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod was added for the B-1B Lancer. The AI bomber guys, the AI. And of course, they are also working on updating many of the other AI aircraft's models to the new standards. Well, that's always good news, we know many of them need a polished new look. Moving on to the already released Mi-24 behind, it seems that there is work being done with progress in the weapons department. The rear gunner cabin is finished, and Petrovich will get a new friend gunner. Most likely a silent comrade manning the cord 12.7mm heavy machine gun. Say hello to my little friend, Natasha. Progress is being made also on the integration of the Air-60 air-to-air -air missile. According to ED, the design of the cockpit panel and functionality aspect of this missile is almost feature complete. And they are planning to make this missile available before remodeling the IR missile guidance in DCS. Good stuff. And speaking of good stuff, it seems that in the avionics system department, ED have finished work on the Greben Course Navigation System Code Refactoring. They have also worked on the magnetic adjustment capabilities of the KM2 panel in the front cockpit. In a previous video, we shortly talked about the new special thermal textures for air, land and sea units alongside terrain objects that ED is working on, with several channels that allow heat signatures to adjust based on the activity of the unit, time of day, ambient air temperature and more. ED told us that when the engine is started, the engine compartment and exhaust system begin to heat up. Makes sense. After driving, the undercarriage, transmission, wheels and tracks also heat up. Guns and launchers also cool down smoothly with inactivity. This will be implemented for modules that use the modern FLIR sensors, such as the Apache, which you already noticed in action in recent videos, then the Viper, the A10C and the Hornet. In our last video, I mentioned the possible expansion of our World War II maps. It seems that the expansion will happen, but only for the Normandy map. An interesting decision by Ugra Media. It will no doubt be a great expansion of the map, in order to include both London and Paris. But it will then encompass the Channel map as well, at least a good chunk of it, making the map almost obsolete in my point of view. But we will have to wait and see. I guess that in the future the channel map may get to be expanded as well. A bit more to the west, who knows, maybe we are going to Berlin. But please, let me know what you think about this. Of course, every expansion and improvement is very welcomed in the CS world. We can't say nothing about that. But please, leave your opinion and thoughts in the comment section down below. And from one map that will be expanded to another one that is yet to be released. The South Atlantic map, yes. Still looking forward to see more information on this one. And as I was curious on how it would feel to experience this region in DCS world, I jumped in Microsoft Flight Simulator and did a small tour. At first, in the eastern part of the map, covering all the airports, air bases and grass strips that are available over there. And from what I see in a picture leaked by one of our mysterious users, that on the east side we will have the Port Stanley Airport, already seen in videos released by Rasbam, then the Mount Pleasant Air Base, followed by the San Carlos FOB. But with many other points of interest and most likely the multiple grass strips that are being used by the locals. Be advised, we are entering a spoiler environment. And as I followed quite a few documentaries about the Falkland Islands or the Malvinas, we won't go too much into politics here at How I Play, we discovered that between the most used airplanes for touring and scenic taxi along the environment is the BN2 Islander with the FIGAS livery that stands for Falklands Islands Government Aviation Service. So I started my flight from Port Stanley Airport, passing the city of Stanley, the capital of the Falkland Islands, with the historic Dockyard Museum and the Christ Church Cathedral. Nearby on the other side is the famous Gypsy Cove where many Magellanic penguins are gathering to do plane spotting. They are most likely fans of our show. 
As we head west along the Darwin Road, we pass Port Harriet, a breeding ground for gentle penguins, where as a tourist you will need permission to visit this place. Many cruise ships offer tours to this area. Next we get to see the Bluff Cove, a sea inlet and settlement. It was the site of secondary landings of the Falklands War, which resulted in a successful attack of the Argentine Air Force, which came to be known as the Bluff Cove Disaster. I linked more information in the video description. Past the Goose Pound, we can see the RAF Mount Pleasant, as known as Mount Pleasant Airport, is a Royal Air Force station in the British Overseas Territory of the Falklands Islands. The airfield goes by the motto of Defend the Right. Mount Pleasant is home to between 1,000 and 2,000 British military personnel. It is about 33 miles southwest of Stanley. Mount Pleasant's first flying unit was the No. 23 Squadron, equipped with four McDonnell Douglas Phantom FGR-2 that arrived from RAF Stanley on 21 April 1986. Later in the year, two Lockheed C-130 Hercules started operating as tankers for air-to-air -air refueling and moved to Mount Pleasant to support the Phantoms. The station provides a base for air defense and transport operations in the South Atlantic. Four Eurofighter Typhoon FGR-4 are operated by No. 1435 flight. I mention all of this to put it in perspective with the recent new modules that are expected in DCS world. As we fly south to lively islands, we pass Bartos Beach where dolphin sightings are common. From where you can park your car, you will have around 15 km round trip on foot, but it will be worth it to see the penguins. Lively Island has a grass airstrip position in the north. From here we started a round trip on the south coast passing multiple islands with their respective grass strips. Heading north, I got to see the San Carlos settlement that consists of a number of properties including a dwelling with a small cafe which also provides craft facilities. And just on the other side in the north we have Port San Carlos. And I think this is where we see the name of San Carlos FOB. The grass strip is lined up just alongside the canal. Then we pass a few more settlements and we follow through Berkeley Sound back to Stanley Airport for our landing. And from what I saw, the Falkland Islands are packed with rock terrain and cliff-lined coasts, scarce vegetation, predominantly mountainous and hilly with the major exception being the depressed plains of Lafonia. As for weather-wise, the climate in the island is cold, windy and humid. We are waiting to see what kind of scenarios our talented community can provide and of course, I already predict many campaigns that will include real historical events. Now let's move on. Heat Blur does it again. In the latest DCS patch was included a much needed guidance update to the AIM-54, restoring much of its performance lost in the previous open beta update. Well, that's good to know. Then news on the Eurofighter emerge. With progress on engineering and programming of systems, True Grid work on the cockpit model draws to a finish and they promise a highly accurate visual representation of this modern fighter, especially in VR. Their words, well, looking forward to that. So the system development will continue throughout 2022 and the Eurofighter is slated to be released after the F4E, which will launch later this year. Well, let's hope that the Phantom won't launch late during this year, so we get two new models ready to be experienced in DCS World. Looking forward on a glorious 2022. And that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. Remember to give us a like if you find our video informative and subscribe to keep in touch with all the latest news on your simulators and games. I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe and I'll see you next time.